The Grand Theft Auto series has been the blueprint for open world games since it launched in 1997. And also, that shit is really fun. These were like the only games I wasn't allowed to play as a kid. But that did not stop me. Cause I would just go sleep over at my friend's house and we'd play GTA 4 and drink Mountain Dew Voltage until we were pissing blue, baby. The only one I had when I was really young was GTA San Andreas. And that was pretty much it until GTA 5 came out and blew my little idiot mind. Since then though, I've gone back and played every GTA game. And I'm gonna rank them on a tier list, starting with S tier being the highest, moving down to A, B, C, D, and F tier being the lowest. I feel like I gotta say this every single time just to drill it into that thick little skull of yours, but I'm ranking these all based on my personal opinion. These are not objective, this is subjective. Different word. It's just my opinion, and trust me, I've got some opinions that are not exactly popular. So please, if you see or hear anything you disagree with, take your anger out on the GTA pedestrians or on your drywall, like the troubled teen that you are. But not on me, okay? I'm just some guy. Please don't pull up outside my house in a tank ready for war. But if you do have a different opinion, let me know down in the comments and maybe we can talk about it. But with all that out of the way, please enjoy. I play- But first, Wanted Dead, a nature show. Since the dawn of humankind, billions have lived and died, all evolving and growing towards this very day. The day that the developers behind Dead or Alive and Ninja Mother Gaiden come together under a new publisher to develop the all new action packed game, Wanted Dead. In her natural habitat, the protagonist of Wanted Dead fights against her enemies ferociously, alternating between her katana and her arsenal of firearms, practicing what scientists have called gun fu. This protagonist in particular is capable of executing over 50 different finishing moves, each with their own unique animations that oh my god she just ripped his arm off. She just took it off of his body. Researchers have identified the domain of our protagonist as a low-tech cyberpunk 90s retro environment. This is made clear to us by the aesthetics of the environment, as well as the big fucking robot, and also the original soundtrack, which contains, quote, some slappers. The game may appear familiar to those experienced in the field of Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 games. That is because it has been heavily inspired by and designed as a love letter to titles from that era. In her time away from ripping apart her foes like a feral beast, our protagonist can be seen playing with a toy crane, doing karaoke, or even just sitting here eating noodles. You remember when she ripped uh, the the man's arm off like a noodle? Are we we just we just gonna forget forget about that now? Study this specimen up close and personally in Wanted Dead, available right now for sixty percent off. You can take advantage of this exclusive offer on PlayStation Four or Five until December twentieth. Wanted Dead is also available on PC. Xbox Series X and S, and Xbox One. So hurry up and get it now with the link in the description or in the pinned comment. GTA 1. Let's just get this out of the way. The first two GTA games, that's so hard to go back and play and actually enjoy. I had some fun with them, but yeah, this first one was definitely the worst of all of them. I can sometimes appreciate old games and how janky they are, but something about the perspective of this game actually makes me nauseous you'll notice like when you start going faster in this game it'll zoom out so that you can see more because obviously when you're zoomed all the way in you can't see a goddamn thing but when you zoom out and then you kind of hit a car and then it's like zooms back in but then you're going faster and it zooms back out it's just like moving in and out and in and out and it makes me nauseous that being said i do have to put a little bit of respect on these first two games because they established what the entire series would be this first game was the one that introduced things like the wanted level or the you know the carjacking and the and the cops coming and chasing you and and setting up barricades i didn't expect there to be this much going on with the cops in this game there was and it was actually pretty impressive i like some vehicles in this game okay the motorcycles impossible to drive they go so fast you can never see where you're going and all you have to do is like slightly bump somebody or something and you go flying off the motorcycle i completely avoided them until i had to drive them and then when i did i would just kind of like inch forward like an earthworm just kind of wriggling my way through the streets i did like okay this was really cool when you'll like drive 
through an alleyway and maybe there's some picnic tables. I wasn't expecting this. I was trying to get away from the cops and I drove through an alleyway through these picnic tables and they just exploded around me and it actually felt kind of cool. Okay, but the funniest part about this game is how when you go to pick up like a mission at a phone booth, you, you walk up and somebody picks up the phone and they start talking. They didn't have voice actors for this game. They just had like that, you know how Animal Crossing does like the, the sounds when, they're, when the people are talking and the text shows up on the screen, it did like that. And I guess with the context of Animal Crossing in my brain, it made it really funny when I heard those sounds and it was like the cutesy kind of sounds, but then I read the text and it's like, I'm gonna rip your guts out with a claw hammer if you don't come and do exactly what I'm telling you to do. It's just, it was just so funny to hear the sounds and then read that coming from it. I'm under the impression that there was a story for this game, but it didn't really click for me. It just, it definitely played second fiddle to the gameplay itself. It was a game first and story kind of existed in the background, but I didn't register. But we're talking about GTA, okay? The story is not the most important part here. What is, is the radio. And it's here, it's here. I, I didn't know that they would have the radio this early on, but they did, and it's cool. I think the main experience I take away from a GTA game is driving around the city, listening to the music, because that's what you're gonna spend most of the game doing anyway. And if that experience is good, then it's a pretty good GTA game. And in this game, I mean, the music was okay, there weren't many tracks, and God, just the camera zooming in and out was really breaking it for me. I understand the impact that this game had on gaming as a whole, okay? You don't need to write an entire essay in MLA format down in the comments, I get it, all right? But just going off of my enjoyment, how much fun I had in this game, and in a list comparing this against the other GTA games to which this is just a prototype, I can't rank it higher than a D tier. Grand Theft Auto 2. I wouldn't call GTA 2 exactly good, but it's better than the first one, which is like all I'm really looking for. Just like in the first GTA, I can sense that there was a story here that they really wanted me to grip into, but I just didn't. You know, it wasn't present enough to really matter. And you know, there were more characters in this game. It controlled a little bit better, but at the end of the day, I mean, it's it's just a goofy little little arcade kind of game. One thing I found interesting was the use of a, a church to save the game. I'm not sure what the whole idea was there, but you walk in, Jesus saves, and just like that, so do you. I just don't have strong opinions on these early GTA games, which is why I'm gonna put GTA 2 in the D tier. And while we're at it, I'm also gonna put GTA Advanced here. I mean, it's all just kind of the same thing to me. And I didn't, I didn't really connect with any of these games. If you, had any kind of connection with these games, I'd love to hear what you thought in the comments. I just, it didn't click for me. GTA 3. So the GTA series for some reason is actually broken up into three distinct universes. You've got the first one being the top-down universe, the 2D universe, and the second one being the 3D universe. And the third one is the HD universe. So this is the end of the 2D universe and the start of the 3D universe. And this is where I tap in, baby. It seemed to me like GTA games progress in like a direct line. At the start, you have the more video gamey type games where the focus is on gameplay and the story could not matter less. And the further you go along, the more cinematic things become, the more story focused at the end. This is definitely in the middle section, but I'll say this is the most video gamey of the 3D and HD GTA games. The game starts off with a cutscene that establishes the entire story. And you just like, if you just pay attention to that like couple of minutes, you kind of get the entire game. So naturally with the story not being as present, I didn't connect to this protagonist that much. I don't really remember if this was present in GTA GTA 1 and 2 because I was too busy trying to just get the motorcycle where I needed it to go. But in GTA 3, I definitely remembered it. And this is a feature that I really liked a lot throughout all the GTA games where you would start on a central location of the map and it would over the course of the game open up and you would get more location. The game takes place in Liberty City, which is Rockstar's fictional version of New York City. And I'll say this a bit throughout the video, I'm not a big fan of Rockstar's interpretation of New York City. I've been in New York City. Yes, there are some bleak places, but there's a lot of beautiful places and it can be fun and vibrant to walk around in. And every interpretation of New York City that Rockstar has put out there has been bleak. Just a big, sad, gray blob of concrete, just like me. I will say though, I didn't really need a story 
story to enjoy this game. It's just a fun ass video game as video game. I just got out of prison. It hasn't been 15 minutes. And this guy wants me to go like pick up a girl and bring her over? Sure, why not, man? I don't care. I definitely had more fun with the later missions of this game. It just, it was so repetitive at the start, especially. And I didn't know exactly why I was doing what I was doing. But I did remember some of the characters. Like this dude in the garage when you just show up on him. Iconic. I love this guy. All the people I was taking missions from weren't just guys on a payphone going. They were like real dudes and most of them were insane. Even having never played this game before, when I heard the music for GTA 3, it just instantly clicked for me. There is just a vibe here that is completely unmatched. The theme music is probably one of my favorites of the series. I wouldn't say it's my favorite necessarily because they're all pretty good. I honestly just in these 3D games had the best theme music behind them. To me, it really comes down to the theme and the atmosphere of the game as to whether I enjoy it or not, right? Because a lot of the time you're going to spend driving around the city, looking at the city and listening to the music that fits into that theme. GTA 3 was actually a more fun game than I expected it to be. And I really appreciated the, the video gamey elements of it. Its theme and its world did not suck me in as much as the other games. So I'm going to give it a C tier. GTA Vice City. Where the protagonist of GTA 3 didn't really stand out to me, Tommy Versetti absolutely stands out to me this guy is insane and i love him i myself am a florida man okay and i can't not love vice city and the atmosphere of this game and the insane characters in it starting off with a deal gone wrong and this guy tommy versetti some angry asshole owes some guy a lot of money and he's got to make it back somehow instantly I have a connection to these missions I'm running around and doing, which I don't necessarily need to have a good time in the game, but it definitely made me feel a little better about running around and doing stuff for these insane people. And there was also a mystery I wanted to get to the bottom of. There was a curiosity of who was behind that deal going wrong. For me, it's the world that makes this game so so good i have never seen a game capture that miami vice energy so perfectly and that was definitely what they were going for and they did it in this game i actually felt like the missions had some weight and some variety early on in the game whereas in gta 3 i was driving back and forth for a while in gta vice city i pretty much jumped straight into the action in a game like this i prefer a protagonist who already has a set personality not just some little ball of clay that i mold with my own two hands and tommy just has so much character right off the bat he's no nonsense he's walking in he's kicking ass taking names probably snorting some stuff the most memorable mission in this game for me and and it was pretty early on was this one on the golf course where you had to go in and take this guy out for one i loved the costume system in this game where you didn't like customize exactly how he looked he just had a couple of different outfits that you can switch around and i love the theme here being dressed up in my golf clothes going out onto the course they take all of your weapons so all you got is a golf cart a golf club and some muscle baby i tried for so long to use a motorcycle and jump up over like the the edge and to get into the golf course without actually walking past security i wasn't able to do it and i kind of wish there were options to do stuff like that like in gta 3 i felt like there was more of that present but in this not really it was you had to kind of walk through security to get there but i just walked up beat this dude up with a golf club i was just fighting everybody with a golf club and i walked out and it was it was cool it almost had this like hitman element to it and i really love the hitman games i loved the sense of progression in the map here but i really didn't like the bridges it was always so it felt like more convoluted than it needed to be for me to get from one island to another as for the story i think this one was the most cut and dry of any of of the games and i really love that right i like i'm a simple man i got a simple brain and i like when things are just flat out told to me straightforward i always knew what the characters were doing why they were doing it at least for tommy it was extremely straightforward i always understood his motives that doesn't mean i always liked the story though it, there was just a couple things that didn't click for me like lance vance i i think i like his character writing but i never really grew to care about him and so when he turned on tommy it never meant much to me 
he also just like showed up out of nowhere at first like he watched me beat up this cook and then he was like all right yeah what's up what's up man like where did you come from okay wait i take it back the golf course thing is not the most memorable thing most memorable is the chainsaw the chainsaw is insane in this game something about just picking up this chainsaw being some dude in a hawaiian shirt just cutting people up was so funny especially the way he runs with it it's so unhinged i don't normally like going back and playing games that are this old but Vice City just, I guess because I had played San Andreas so much, it just felt like putting on an old glove, comfortable, fit perfectly. Also it being, you know, Florida, Miami, it's, it's themes I'm comfortable with, I'm familiar with, and it made it so much more fun. This game is really solid, but a lot of the GTA games are really solid. So I've got to rank it in reference to those other ones. I'm going to give GTA Vice City an eight here. GTA San Andreas. Now this is the one I have pumped countless hours into it was the final evolution of gta 1 the culmination of everything before it the story the gameplay the atmosphere all come together to create an unmatched experience i could probably make a whole video talking about gta san andreas and if you would want to see that let me know but i'll just keep it pretty simple for the sake of this video i'll talk about the characters first i thought every character was extremely well written but not shoehorned in i didn't feel like they were popping in on me 24 7 but every time i saw them they distinguished themselves immediately starting off with officer tenpenny that's samuel l jackson is the greatest antagonist of any dta game and you can fight me on that i will fight you on that tenpenny is my favorite antagonist of any of these games big smoke immediately is just iconic i mean if you've seen anything from dta san andreas it is definitely a clip from big smoke i cared about big smoke pretty much instantly which made it so much more impactful when you did realize that he had turned on you a little bit of a spoiler there but the game is really old you should know this by now big smoke he turned on you He's been turned on you. And this was foreshadowed throughout the entire game. I mean, for God's sake, he lived in like enemy territory. Every time you would show up at Big Smoke's house, Tenpenny was just walking out. Ryder was a bitch. I did not like Ryder, but that's okay because he turned on you too. I loved how they showed his addiction throughout the game and how that influenced him. It wasn't like push into your face necessarily, but it was made pretty clear, especially when he was like digging around in his yard to find a stash. And tons of other characters written crazy well. Only one that I think could have used a little more was actually CJ. I didn't get that strong sense of character that I got from Tommy Versetti, but what I did get was an option to make him fat and I did it. I made him real fat instantly. It's not a big deal, but I really love being able to just like go to the gym and make CJ get big. I don't know why I love playing as him when he was like a hulking beast. This is like the only GTA game where that's a feature. And I really liked it. The driving in this game felt amazing. The music, this is the best of all of the GTA music. And once again, you can fight me on that. I mean this, GTA San Andreas has the best soundtrack, not only in its theme, but also in the radio, best music on the radio. Something I can say for all of these games is that they are so unforgiving with their save points. I didn't feel like it was necessary to mention in the others because I was just gonna mention it for this. And this is where I had the most trouble with it. There's this one mission where you have to go into this gang meetup and the cops have raided the place and you have to take out a bunch of them. You have to do the whole thing in one go. And I did over and over and over and over again. And once you like find your brother, you make it to the roof and there's like the helicopter and then you get into like this car chase thing. And if you mess up all the way at the car chase, it'll send you back to before you cleared out the place. I did appreciate the abundance of side activities and massive, I mean massive map in this game. It is so big. There is a lot of nothing in the game, but I kind of like that. I like that there's, you know, big expanses of nothing, especially just because there is stuff to do in the populated areas. It made going out to like the back country areas really feel like driving out to the back country. But the point in this game where you unlock the rest of the map, it feels like it was building up in tension and suspense. And then all of a sudden, bam, you're out in the middle of nowhere and you're doing like little things. You were building up this gang and now you're just kind of not. But that's okay, because the story doesn't need to drive you forward in this game, because there's enough to do, at least most of the time. There were like a couple of times where I didn't know exactly what to do or where to go, but I still had fun just driving around. The things I loved about this game the most were the characters. I thought they were the best of any GTA characters and most memorable to me. The music, because it was stuff that, you know, my mom used to put on a lot. And so it was already familiar for me. It was just, it was very comfortable 
comfortable. The driving, this might just be nostalgia, but I enjoyed how the cars handled in this game the best, especially because of what came after it. I really loved the low riders in this game. I don't know why I thought they were so fun. And most importantly, I think this was the best middle ground between like the very video gamey stuff and the very cinematic experiences we get with current day GTA games. I do wish it had some more of the freedoms you get with a game like GTA 3, but at the end of the day, I am okay with a straightforward objective, you know, like a, a marker that says, go right here and do this thing. As long as I get to run around and just shoot stuff, I'm having a good time. I'm actually really glad I decided to make this video because I probably wouldn't have gone back to play San Andreas without it. Because I did, you know, I went back in and I just driving around, I just felt that crazy sense of nostalgia that I don't get very often from games. You know, it just reminded me of simpler times, I guess. I don't know if I can say with a straight face that GTA San Andreas is the objective, like best GTA game, but to me, is my favorite. I have the best memories with this one. And every time I sit down and get into this world, I get sucked in and things feel a little simpler, which is something that I really enjoy. So I'm going to put GTA San Andreas in S tier. GTA Liberty City Stories. So I didn't know that they actually made like handheld versions of these worlds. This is kind of crazy that this exists, right? I'm going to be fully transparent with you. I didn't play a ton of this game, so I don't feel like I can give it the fairest ranking, but I have a pretty good idea. I don't know if it was just like the way I emulated it on my uh, computer. The PSP version looks way better. Honestly, I wish their version of Liberty City looked like this all the time. It was way more colorful, vibrant, and fun to drive around in. And also, I know I said San Andreas got the best main theme, but this one, I mean, it kind of goes. Liberty City Stories, if you don't know, is like a prequel kind of thing for GTA 3. Like I said, I didn't play a ton of it, so I can't give it the fairest ranking in the world. And they cut out like the obvious stuff, right? Like you're not flying around this map or anything like that. But what is here is super solid. It's pretty bare bones for a GTA game, especially coming off of San Andreas, but the core elements are there and honestly, the story itself is better than the one in GTA 3, in my opinion. I do plan to play more of this game in the future, so maybe at some point this will change, but as it stands, it's a solid GTA experience, but nothing crazy. I give a C tier. GTA Vice City Stories. At this point, I'm a sucker for just Vice City for the location, which is why I'm so glad GTA 6 is going back there. But this game, it put itself in such a box. It wasn't able to do much because the main character you play as is the guy who gets killed off instantly in GTA Vice City. So like, no matter what you do in this game, it doesn't matter because you see exactly where this guy ends up. You do get to see more of Lance Vance from, you know, the Vice City, but he's equally as annoying, maybe more annoying in this game. I actually thought Victor, the main character of Vice City Stories, had a really interesting story and it wasn't just that normal run of the mill hey i want to be a crime boss it was like he was in the military and then he got kicked out it was a whole thing it's still crazy impressive to me how they were able to capture vice city for a psp game it's insane and not only that but add on to it with new stuff right i thought i thought the missions were okay they were pretty good what i loved about this game that i wish they had done in other ones was the empire building that you could do throughout the game. You could go and build out, take these territories and build them out, these like businesses and stuff. And sometimes they would get attacked and you would have to go defend your business, things like that. And you were building up this empire. And so there was a tangibility to your takeover. Whereas Tommy Rossetti just ran around with a chainsaw, cutting people up, doing stuff and taking out crime bosses. And then just kind of called himself the you know the big boss in in vice city in this game it actually feels like you're building up to that over time again i think it's a little undermined by the fact that he just i mean he just gets off in the beginning of vice city so none of it matters but i really like the system in place and i wish they would do more shit like this if you don't think about it in the context of he's just gonna lose it all and become a not important character that's really just a motivation for this lame character this game is pretty good Actually, it's way better than I expected it to be. I don't know why I went into these portable GTA games expecting them to just be so bad, but they were good. They were really good, better than I expected. And I like this one a lot better than I liked GTA uh, Liberty City Stories. So I'm gonna give GTA Vice City Stories a perhaps controversial B tier. GTA 4, 
This was a pivotal point in the GTA series where they wanted to go from those 3D games to the HD games. They created a whole new continuity for this game and they took this new character, Nico Bellic, dropped him straight off the boat into a more realistic uh, Liberty City. I'll start off by talking about the city itself because I've seen a lot of praise for it and I understand why people like it because it fits in with the tone and the story of this game. I understand that this was the, the vision that they had for it. This is the story they wanted to tell. Just because it's purposeful doesn't mean it was good. That bleak gray blob that is Liberty City in GTA 4, it, from my perspective, it seems like it's meant to represent that juxtaposition between the American dream and what people might see it as versus what it actually is, which is a nasty cesspool full of bad people. I think the aim to make this game more realistic than the games before it was good and bad in different ways. Start off with the good. I think the physics system in this game is better than in any other game I've seen, even better than GTA 5 in my opinion. It's a huge improvement over GTA San Andreas where they just kind of flop down. In this, you know, people actually have a weight to them. They move in a way that you would expect which is, you know, more fun to play around with. The bad, the driving. And I know some people like this. Again, I've been looking to see your opinions. I know some people like this. I hate it. I hate it. I am driving a boat. I am driving the Titanic through this city. And those stupid little thin trees are my iceberg. On the good side, I think the action set pieces actually seemed like action set pieces, you know? Like moments in GTA Vice City where I'm in a helicopter just shooting the minigun and it just feels like nothing or in san andreas when i'm you know like i drive up over a thing and it goes to like a cinematic camera and things explode behind me but it just kind of looks like some kid playing with legos in gta 4 when you're doing something like you just robbed the bank and you're now running and gunning through the city it has so much more like intensity to it and i think that's only acquired through the more cinematic approach bad I think the side activities have become incredibly boring. Whereas I would normally love to go to a lowrider competition and do stuff, it felt more like a video game in that point. I hated going bowling or doing anything with the people. I was forced to go on a date pretty much instantly. And that was just not fun for me. If I wanted to do this, I would play Wii Bowling. This is not Wii Bowling, this is hell. Good, I think the characters are doing things that make more sense, right? So one thing that really could take me out of it at times was when, like for example, CJ had just, you know, his brother just went to prison and like it was a whole ordeal. You know, you'd think he'd be focused on that, but then he goes and the next mission I have is to do a race. But in GTA 4, for example, let's say I'm going to do a side activity, something that's just recreational. I've, uh, I've agreed to a date, you know? And all of a sudden Roman calls me and he's like, yo, dude, I'm about to die. You gotta come help me right now. I can ditch, completely leave the date, go help Roman and then go back on the date later and then Nico's like, oh, I had to go help Roman. I think that's cool. And bad, I think at least for me, it just, it lost that magic of driving around and listening to the music, feeling the atmosphere. The only atmosphere I get from driving around this dreary city and listening to the talk radio that, I mean, it's so funny that everything that comes over this talk radio is hilarious, but it, I don't get the vibe. You know what I mean? I get how up against the other GTA protagonists, Nico comes across as one of the most well-written. Among them, yeah, he probably is one of the most well-written. Immediately, his loyalty to his family is established and also his motivation for a better life. He wants those fast cars, the big mansion, and all the women. And it's also immediately established that he has that dark past that he's running from. I guess my thing is not that he's not well written, but his character archetype is one that I don't generally enjoy. I don't know, I'd love to hear what you think about him in the comments, but for me, this character just didn't work as, as intended. And also, I know, I'm, I know I'm an asshole for saying this, okay? But I really hate Roman. I hate when he calls, I hate when he wants to go bowling. Roman, I don't want to go bowling anymore. I'm done. I just can never stand the guy whose entire character is, oops, I did it again. We're in trouble and you got to save me. But again, I don't think they're bad characters necessarily. They're just ones I didn't click with. The last bad thing I have to say about GTA 4 is just things can be pretty clunky at times. Like the hand-to-hand -hand combat, extremely clunky, slow. I'm like, I'm fighting like a walrus and 
Uh, think, let me think. The clothes, it's better than the GTA San Andreas one, mind you. But still, I think walking up to the clothes on the rack to try them on was just... Just give me a menu, man. Just give me a menu to cycle through and call it a day. I did appreciate the depth and detail in this world. I think what it is for me is like, I've been to New York City and I loved being there. I obviously didn't live there, so it was a little better. I got to leave, but it, it isn't this bleak, nasty place to me. I, you know, I've liked being there. I've walked through Times Square looking up at the lights and I'm like, oh my God, this is awesome. And then I look at the sea of people and I go, oh my God, I'm scared. Like if the game doesn't think the world is cool, I'm probably not gonna think the world is cool, right? Like Vice City and San Andreas, both, they're like, this world is awesome. It, it fits into this theme. And in GTA 4, or really any version of Liberty City, they're like, this world is sad and messed up, man. But like, good luck though. I do give this game some points for its awesome DLCs, both The Lost and the Damned and The Ballad of Gay Tony, both were just really fun for me to play. One, I liked the biker thing. I, I think that's really the thing for me, is I like a strong theme, right? And like a biker theme was really cool. I'd never played like a biker game before. And I thought the story was actually pretty thought out, even though it was, you know, it was rushed because it was a DLC. And the Ballad of Gay Tony, I like how they weaved that narrative into the greater narrative of GTA 4. I really miss when we had DLCs that were like this and now it's just Battle Pass. I'm so ready for the GTA 6 Battle Pass. I don't mean to be too hard on this game, right? Like I enjoyed it, I had fun with it, but there were just some things that didn't click for me and some things that I really loved about the older games that weren't here. So, I mean, I'm gonna give GTA 4 a B tier. GTA Chinatown Wars. You thought I was gonna miss this one, didn't you? No, 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 no. We're talking about it. This is the best of the 2D games, okay? It's not like great or amazing, but it's so much fun. I lied before. I, I remembered actually playing this game when I was younger on my friend's DS. The fact that this game is on a DS is crazy to me. The mini games, like you know those normal mini games you would get with a DS game where you like, I don't know, maybe it's like a farming game and you're sorting eggs, right? With And you drag the eggs over. There was stuff like that in this game for just like crimes. And it's similar to like the, the Animal Crossing dialogue from GTA 1. I find this so funny. I like the stylized look of it. I really don't have too much to say about this one. It was, it was a fun time, but it was nothing, I mean, crazy. You know, I would give this the best of the 2D games, but nothing I would like really you know, sink my teeth into. I'm gonna give this one a C tier. GTA 5. I was 13 years old when GTA 5 came out. And I remember the day that I got it, I came home from school and my mom took me to GameStop. She always used to take me there and I would sit in there and just look at games for hours. And she would talk to like the employees and stuff. But today we went in and you know the employee gave her the spiel she told her ah this game has like you know violence mature themes blah 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 and uh, for some reason my mom did it anyway we didn't have a lot while i was growing up one thing my mom always made sure of was that i had video games to play i think i think she just knew that i needed that sense of escapism gta 5 you know i don't know how she did it but pulled it together made sure i got the game right when it came out and i sunk into it. Of all the games I have nostalgia for, I'd say like Assassin's Creed, Spider-Man, and this game. Now it's not perfect by any means, okay? But this game just means so much to me, you know? I mean, it's been 10 years since then, and it's a game that I opened as recently as like a few months ago. Not only was it what teenage me lived for, but it was also how a little older me made a living. I used to edit videos for YouTubers before I was one myself. And I edited it for uh, Quebel Cop. Now I think he just gets robots to do it. I don't know, I got fired. And even that aside, it was a way that I connected with some of the best friends that I have today. You know, my friend Bo. A lot of the time we spent together when we met was playing GTA Online. It just feels like it was such a big part of my life, right? Like I was there the day that GTA Online went online and it was like not playable at all. My friend Lewis would do some PS3 glitch to get me infinite money on GTA Online. I'm telling you all this first so that you understand that even if like there's a lot of stuff wrong with this game, it just, it just means a lot to me. And I'm absolutely gonna rank it with that in mind. I just don't see how I couldn't. GTA 5 brings some of the goofiness back that I really wanted from those older games, but 
In doing so, I think takes away some of the punch that comes with a lot of it. A lot of the characters are more one note and honestly less relatable. Like at least I understood the intricacies of Nico Bellic and his and his struggle coming to America. I did not really relate to the struggles of Trevor, who was just insane. And like, they went really far just to make you see that he was insane. It's something that actually makes me really mad about this game, is that the protagonist from The Lost and the Damned, the DLC from GTA 4, he's built up in that DLC to be like this cool biker guy. And in GTA 5, Trevor kills him. He, can't, he just dies. He's dead. Trevor kills him in the first like couple of minutes. And before he does, they just completely neuter him. I also think the story elements pushing the plot forward in this game are a lot weaker than in most other GTA games, in fact. The first big thing that pushes this plot forward is that Michael is getting cucked by the tennis coach. And so he follows him to this big mansion and pulls it down off a mountain. Oh, wouldn't you know it? The mansion doesn't belong to the tennis coach. There's just some big crime boss. And now the big crime boss shows up and is like, you need, you owe me money. And so, wow, now they got to rob banks. And I don't think Michael is necessarily one note. I think it's interesting how they brought in this washed up criminal who just can't really stand the monotony of everyday life and wants to go back to that exciting life. But he's not a character that I could have any sympathy for in any way. My favorite character is Lester. Uh, I think he's insane, but in like an awesome way. On the technological side, I mean, this game is the best of all of them, but that's just because it is the latest one, right? And even then, right, it's so impressive. The shooting feels the best, the weapon wheel is good, the, all, all of it, all the stuff. The driving was so much better than in GTA 4. I'm so much happier with this. It's not my favorite. I, I think I like San Andreas a little bit better, but it was still good. I enjoyed it. It was fun enough to do 1 billion GTA online races, so I really like bank robbing stuff. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm such a Neanderthal. You know what I mean? You just gotta like shake a cool jingly key ring in front of me. and I'm having a great time. Setting up for the heists, going in, making it happen. God, it just comes together so well. And it's so much fun to play out that I don't even care why they want the money. It's just fun to go get. I take it back. Actually, I like Lamar the best. Lamar is also insane, but in an awesome way. I think this one does suffer from being a little too cinematic, the same as GTA 4. And I wish it had that more gamey feeling, but still I think what it does better than GTA 4, at least for me, is the action set pieces are the best. They can be a little over the top and zany, but I like that kind of thing. And now we got to talk about GTA Online, okay? I am going to lump it in because to me it is it is one experience. GTA Online has contributed to some of my best memories and some of the worst consequences in gaming ever. Being able to do heists with my friends unmatched so much fun but does that mean i want to spend all my money on a shark card so that i can just run around and get blown up in a tank in some open lobby not really it is such a huge contributing factor to the death of dlc think about the single player dlc we could have gotten for gta 5 had everything not been poured into gta online because money talks and that's just the whole reason. it really stopped being fun a long time ago and has just turned into something insane and even now i think gta 5 has just lived on too long i don't know if you've ever seen like a, a mod video for gta 5 they are feral it, that is the best way i can describe it a feral beast who just ripped open a trash bag and this is what came out also i don't know if you've played gta recently but if you go into it and you're like listening to the radio there's just like current music you know, I think I think the radio has been ruined by too many options and just being the radio now. You know what I mean? Like I just turned it on and the baby came on. There's a lot that's not great about GTA 5, but when I boot it up even now, I'm having a good time and I can't help but consider just the great memories I have playing it. So I'm gonna give GTA 5 a big old fat s tier i am going to distinguish i think san andreas is better than gta 5 san andreas is my number one i'm gonna put that out there but gta 5 is still good gta trilogy the definitive edition oh you thought we were done no 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 wham
garbage. <laughs> At least it was garbage when it came out. I gotta say, I played it recently, like just for this video, and being able to go back and play San Andreas with all of the improvements to like, like I think that driving is literally the best. I think it's the best. And the gunplay is also the best. I'm just a sucker for San Andreas. I didn't really wanna play the other two in the definitive edition, but I did sink like 30 hours, maybe it was 40, I think like 40 hours into San Andreas on the definitive edition, just cause I, I was having so much fun. I do think they should have done better with this, right? Like it could have been so much better. And this is not how you pay respects to the games that like built the franchise, in my opinion. But I would also say this is the best way to experience GTA San Andreas. And I know, I know that is sacrilege, but I really do believe it. It is fun and it gave me those same vibes and I wasn't dealing with the janky controls of older games. And also I could just boot it up on my PS5 and have a good time. I do wish they had given it a real remaster. You know what I mean? Like they did not fix the checkpoints at all. There's still so much that is completely dated and they could have fixed so easily, but didn't. And I don't know why, but overall, it's really not that bad. I'm gonna give this GTA trilogy a C tier. And that is where I personally would rank all of the GTA games. Let me know down in the comments what you think. Maybe if you got some different ideas, feelings, opinions, let me know, we can talk about it. Are you excited for GTA 6? Cause I'm excited. I'm probably gonna dump my entire life into it. Maybe I'll make a video about it. I don't know. But anyways, yeah, click uh, the card right here. Cause uh, I make other videos too. This is just one of them. I make many. This is one of them, and I like this one. It's very good. I picked it just for you. All right. Uh, thank you for almost 100K. That's it's so crazy how much we've grown. Uh, wild. I really appreciate it. Yeah, click card. Thank you. Goodbye.